And one day he said, why you turn down all the roles in these movies? I looked at him like, are you kidding me? You can't act. There's only one role you could play. And he said, what's that, the first black James Bond? I said, no, the first Michael black Jordan. Jordan. So from Michael till now, obviously a ton has changed. Um, tell me a little bit about where you're at now in your life as an agent and as a businessman and talk to me and let's open up the conversation a bit about today. And I'd love to sure. hear what you think about our business. So we sold the business. So I, I worked for Donald Dell for 17 and a half years, never made any significant amount of money. I think the most I ever made was like $220,000, but I was very happy and I loved what I was doing, and I never wanted to go on my own. But I always told Donald, you know, if I ever find out that I'm not the highest paid employee in the company, I was the vice chairman, and if I ever find out that I have to put a gun to your head in order for you to pay me, I'm gone. Yep. And unlike the movie Jerry Maguire, when he leaves, he has 72 clients, and he only takes Cuba Gooding yep. with him, I took the whole thing lock, <laughs> stock, and barrel. I was on my own for six years. I had a very small company. I had 24 people and 40 clients. We try to really be selective. You know, and you learn from your own clients. So I signed a football player in 84 named James Lofton, mm -hmm. and we got him the highest deal in the history of pro football by like 35%. We just blew the salary structure open. And he comes to me as an industrial engineering major from Stanford. He's very, very smart, very low key. And he says to me, um, I'm gonna give you some advice. I came to you because you had James Worthy, Arthur Ashe, you had like a who's who of African-American superstars. And now that you've signed me with for all this money, you, you're going to get hundreds of football players to ask you to represent them. Don't. Be really selective because guys like me won't come with you yep. if all of a sudden you represent. And I never, I never forgot that. Um, it was really great it's, advice. And you know, you can learn so much from your own clients because they're smart and yeah. they're competitive. Um, and so I was on my own for six years and people started making us offers to buy the business. If you would have told me that you could sell a personal service business or a law firm, it wasn't even in my comprehension yes. you could do that. And so I really didn't want to sell the business. That's the funny part. I loved being on my own. I loved having my name on the door. And so I made an arbitrary decision, completely arbitrary, that if I couldn't get $100 million, I wasn't going to sell the business. And if you don't think it's worth 100 you wouldn't have fed me in the least. But next summer, if you come to me, I'll probably tell you it's 200. Yep. Every year I'm on my own. It's like being single. The longer you're single, the harder it is to get married because you get so set in your ways. While this was going on, incredibly, I had met Hank Paulson, who was the chairman of Goldman, twice. So Paulson thought that was really cool. And in the middle of this process of selling the company, he calls me at home on a Sunday and says, gosh, why didn't you tell me that you're selling the company? I want to help you. I said, wait a minute. You as the chairman of Goldman Sachs Want to help me sell this little, tiny little company? He said, yeah, I love sports, you know, whatever. And he called me like once a week to give me like a state of the union. I was nervous as hell. I was nervous that I was doing something stupid by setting this high bar. He really relaxed me. When he got involved in the negotiations, it just, everything changed. And after that... You got your 100 million. 200 million. Let me ask you about one person in particular. You represented Michael Jordan. Um, people know you and will always know you for being at the forefront of that and for being Michael Jordan's agent. Rich Paul today has become the face of the agency business. Um, personally, he's a friend of mine and I think he's done an incredible job, but he's very polarizing and people have different opinions on it. I also think that him, Maverick, Randy, their whole group sometimes gets kind of boxed into this like LeBron's friends when I can tell you to a man that each one of them individually are true, incredible businessmen. Talk to me a little bit about him, your relationship with him, and what you think about what they I probably know Maverick better than I know Rich. I really like Maverick. And, you know, and I, I, I want to make it aside, which I, you know, I, I said the same thing to you. You know, the one crazy part about the agent business, it's so cutthroat that nobody ever wants to give you like, props if you do something great. Yeah. Like to me, when Kevin turned down $80 million to go to Brooklyn, whether you think that's a good decision, that's mind boggling to me that he has the confidence with your help and advice to say, hey, look, I've made so much money. This is where I want to go. I'm willing to give up the money. It's amazing. In my career. That wasn't the only time he did that either. Okay. But, yeah. but I think that's pretty amazing. Like in our business, 
I'm not looking for compliments from other agents, but I texted Maverick about six months ago and he got put on the board of Live Nation. And I said, hey, I'm really proud of you. Ironically, Live Nation is a company that bought my company. And he wrote me back like in a minute and said, without you, there's no me. Now, he didn't have to say that. It was a really nice thing to say. Same thing when we had a yeah. conversation. The one agent I always had absolutely the most respect for was Arn Tellum. I thought Arn was really smart. He had a huge, he had, we bought his business. We had 40 clients, he had 240 clients. Um, I thought he was amazing at moving guys around and, and, and really maxing out their value. Another person I really like was a really old school guy who I actually hired in 1983 is Steph's agent, Jeff, Jeff Austin. Love him, yeah. I love Jeff Austin. I think he's old school, straight, um, really committed to his clients. He, you know, he doesn't have 10 Steph Currys. You know, he's got Wes Matthews and those. He's done get $19 million for yeah. Wes Matthews. I think Jeff is really, really good. I think Mark Bartlestein uh, is very good, uh, really knows the rules. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of interaction, yeah. you know, with, with, with the agents. Um, but, but I think the game is definitely changing. I think, you know, as I've told you in our private conversations, I really think that the, that the need for a traditional agent is largely over. It may not be completely over. And I think that, um, I think that athletes are making so much money. We, we talked about the family office sort of structure. I think that you don't need to be in a big agency, a Wasserman, an Octagon, a CAA. A, I did all of Michael's deals myself. You need yep. a big company that has all the resources. I did them all myself. When I worked for Coach K as his marketing guy from 1997 to a few years ago, he was the most marketed college coach in any sport in America, the highest paid, on the court and yep. off the court. Did he need a big company to do that? I don't think no. he did. I mean, I think he yeah, had an amazing... I, I think he was a, he is the best, the, high, the winningest coach in the history of college basketball. He's really smart, really family oriented. He's got an amazing program, and he just needed to be plugged into the right corporate sure. partners. And so I think that today's the players that are superstars like Kevin or LeBron, Giannis coming up. I think with a smart representative, for lack of a better term who can come up with a modern day plan that puts them in different environments that are complementary. Some may be traditional marketing, corporate marketing. A lot of them are going to be venture capital or new age kinds of things, digital opportunities. You know, I, I think that I think that's where it's going. I think yeah. the idea of someone having 40 clients like I did, I think those I think that it is where it's headed, but I think it's going to put an emphasis on there being more David Fox more myself, Maverick, Rich, and there aren't many Greek freaks and there aren't many people that can manage a business that big. He's lined up to be able to have a business built around him, to have representation that knows how to build a generational business, and that's a skill. So I think there's kind of a transition into that, and I think that a lot of people that I meet now that are coming up are asking those questions. Do I have to be with an agency, um, either player or a young agent? And the question is obviously no, but if you go out on your own, you need to be prepared, you need to be equipped, you need to understand how to build a business, and that's a rarity. And I think the agencies serve the purpose in a great way still for so much of the league. And everybody, like you said, is not Kevin Durant. They aren't even the Greek freak yet. And the Greek freak may be bigger than everyone, but you don't know this in year three, four, five. You just don't. I know from early in Kevin's career till now, and um, and even in Kevin's business, you know, Kevin and I started an agency together, and there is a process to get to that. So I think sure. that agencies in general should probably be more cognizant of that, and I think they are. I look at what CAA's done with Dwayne Wade's business, and Dwayne's been at CAA and has built what optically would look like Dwayne Raid Inc., you know, and it is for all intents and purposes, but it's under the, the roof of an agency. So I think it's changing and it's obviously, it's, in, it's incredible for me to be able to hear from you what you've seen, how in touch you are today with what you were able to do earlier in your career, because for me, like Maverick, um, you've been an inspiration, you've been a uh, mentor from afar, and now we're getting to know each other, and you've been my bald brethren from the beginning. You know, I, I'm rooting for guys like you um, 
to raise the bar, to, to take the business into the, the 21st century. I will tell you this though, similar to what Maverick said, I also wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I appreciate that, I appreciate this time. Thank you, man. I, I really enjoyed it, great conversation. Day. Appreciate you, man. Great Thanks conversation, so much. really enjoyed it.